so today i'm going to explain you about the functional coverage and the assertions coverage and assertions okay so these two things are used to verify the design okay one way we are writing in the scoreboard in the scoreboard we are checking whether we are getting the required output or not okay but sometimes we may need to know whether our protocol is working according to specification or not so for that we need assertions and coverage assertions for example let's take an example of apb protocol that apb protocol uh, whenever your ready signal equal to sorry p enable p enable signal is equal to 0 at that time your w data write signal w address or p address all these signals should be constant so let uh, how we can check it whether these signals are constant or not so for this we can use assertions now in this your fifo and synchronous fifo we have four conditions okay full empty then overflow underflow so we need to check whether these uh, four signals are getting asserted properly or not okay uh, how can i check okay so for full signal i can check whenever w pointer its value equal to equal to fifo depth sorry not a w pointer i can write w pointer equal to equal to read pointer that i have explained also okay and w pointer msb is not equal to read pointer msb so when this condition is satisfied at that time my uh, full signal should go high so every clock cycle i need to check it so these things we can check using assertions similarly for empty whenever w pointer equal to equal to right pointer right pointer equal to equal to read pointer in every clock pulse okay then my empty signal should go high then overflow overflow means my empty signal equal to high next in the next clock cycle okay my read enable signal equal to 1 so if these two conditions are satisfied then overflow signal should be 1 similar uh, sorry this is a uh, underflow for overflow full signal equal to equal to 1 and you are making right enable equal to 1 so when these conditions are happening at that time i have to check whether overflow equal to 1 or not so all this thing i can check using assertions easily if you want any other way you have to write some logic for it that logic may be somehow complex but if i are using assertions it will be easier next coming to coverage in the coverage i am going to check whatever the signals i need to generate whether i have uh, generated all the signals properly or not let's take an example i have generated only write enable equal to one i have never made read enable equal to one so write enable equal to one means it will be only writing into fifo whatever the scoreboard logic i have written that logic will work whenever there is a read but here there is no read operation so it is not going to compare so you are not going to get any message okay whether there is any error or not so how can i find these things i have to check coverage in the coverage i will check whether write enable signal equal to one and zero properly generated or not read enable signal one or zero properly generated or not overflow signal whether one or zero both are getting generated or not so all the signals whether they are properly getting generated or, or not for this we are going to use coverage again this coverage it is of two types one is code coverage another is functional coverage in the code coverage everything is done by tool only you don't have to do anything okay you just have to check if you are uh, getting code coverage less than 100% you have to check which signals are not getting generated 
tool will give you information that okay this signal uh, code coverage is 75% so this signals which value is not getting generated you have to generate those values in the test bench and function coverage it is written by the verification index so we will see how to write this functional coverage understood about assertions and coverage yes ma'am so here i have just uh, explained only little bit there are so many things in the coverage and assertions these are the basics part that, that i have explained okay so coverage in the code coverage you have statement coverage branch coverage conditions coverage you don't have to do anything okay so uh, what is this statement coverage you have written so many statements in the code I'll just check here Now here each line I can say each line is one one statement. Okay, so whether all the lines are getting executed or not in the design, whether all the lines are properly getting executed or not. So these things are given by the statement coverage. Okay, sometimes what happens? Uh, your design engineer have written some code that is not like uh, that is like dead code. That code is inside the logic inside your project, but it is not going to work. Whether that code is present or absent, it is not going to affect your design. Sometimes this kind of code may be there due to those codes, as those codes are not necessary, so it will not be covered in the statement coverage. You may get your statement coverage less than hundred percent. So you have to verify. Okay, so you first you have to verify whether properly signals are getting generated or not. That is from verification point of view. Then again, you have to check in the design also whether all the lines are properly getting executed or not. If any line is not getting executed, then you have to ask the design engineer whether this line is important or not. If it is not important, then ask them to remove. If it is important, then again you have to check whether why the signals are not getting generated. According to that, you have to generate. So each statement means it is statement coverage. Now see. Here, let I have made reset signal is equal to one. I have never made reset signal zero. So reset signal is equal to one means only this statement will get executed. So I will get here how many statements are there? One statement, two statement, three statement. So between among three statement, only one statement is getting executed. So I will get functional coverage like one by three, like thirty three percent. Okay, so like this, it is calculated automatically. You don't have to calculate. Tool calculates these things. Now, next is branch coverage. Branch coverage means if else case statement. So here, uh, now see this else. This is one branch. This is one branch. Statement wise, in this branch there are two statements are there. Okay, so uh, branch coverage means it is like one block. Okay, if block or else block or case block, it will check whether all the things inside it are getting executed or not. Condition coverage means whatever the Boolean expressions you have written, according to that, uh, like this kind of things. If you have written, okay, uh, if select is equal to one, select it is true, then. This kind of things it is covered in the condition coverage. You have written using conditional operator. Okay, so whether both these conditions like in uh, select is equal to zero, select is equal to one, both the conditions are getting generated or not. So let here you have made just select is equal to one, then here you will get condition coverage as fifty percent. Then transition coverage means let you are doing some counter. Okay, so in that counter, um, uh, your state should be first zero, then one, then two, then three, then four. So it is like transition. Whether all the transitions are happening properly or not, zero to one, one to two, two to three, after three, whether it is again coming to zero or not. So these things are covered in the transition coverage. State coverage means let you are writing a state machine. So whether all the states are oh, whatever the inputs you are giving, all the states are getting generated or not, getting covered or not. So these things are done by code coverage. Another is the toggle coverage. Okay, this part is important. Uh, okay, let in this FIFO. Okay, uh, I have W address. 
and p data sorry address and data so address size equal to 64 bit uh, let i am taking let data is also is equal to 64 bit now is it possible to generate all the combinations all the combinations means 2 to the power 64 if I am going to check um, for data, my form, uh, coverage should be 100%. So it is like you have to generate all the 2 to the power 64 values. But practically, it is not possible to generate. If you are generating, then your simulation will get slower. It will get so many, so much time to complete all the things. So in this case, I am going to check the toggle coverage. Toggle coverage means it has total 64 bits whether all the 64 bits are toggling from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. If I'm checking this, then it's okay. No need to check all the 2 to the power 64 combinations. Okay, so the toggle coverage means for reset also. For reset, if I'm checking toggle coverage, then I will get to know whether reset is made 0 to 1 and again 1 to 0. So toggle coverage means it will check whether it is going from 0 to 1 and next 1 to 0. So everything it is done by the tool only. Okay. You don't have to do anything. Okay. Now here is functional coverage. So functional coverage. How to write a functional coverage. Okay. So in the functional coverage, first you have to write one cover group. Okay. Let's here take an example. Let I have two signals, one is data, another is address. Just give me one minute. So I have to write the functional coverage part for it. Functional coverage means I have to first write cover group. Inside the cover group, let cover group name it. Um, uh, Mm, cover group name is let's CG functional coverage or CG coverage. This is my cover group name. Okay, so it is like module and module class and class. So cover group, then cover group name, then end cover group. Now inside this cover group, you have to write one cover point. So cover point means here I have two signals. So with respect to one signal, I have to write one cover point. So now let cover point data next cover point address. Now it is let uh, its size is one down to zero. Size is one down to zero. Okay. So now here cover group then cover point so this is the cover point for the data and this is the cover point for the address so here what will happen my data size is two bit that it is three bit so here it will check all the possible four combinations zero one two three if these four values are getting generated or in the test bench you are getting uh, generating data values zero one two three then for data your functional coverage will get hundred percent Similarly, for address, it is a three bit, so you have to generate zero to eight, seven, all the possible combinations. If you are generating all these combinations, then your cover coverage per percent will be 100%.
if anything you are missing according to this your coverage will reduce so this is known as your implicit bins you just have to write the cover point then it will automatically take the size and it will automatically generate the values okay so now let a, a, in this address you don't want 0 to 7 you just want that my address value should be uh, 5 6 2 these three values should get generated. I don't need all zero to seven values. If I'm checking my uh, design with respect to these three values, then my design is okay. No need to generate all those values. So here you have explicitly, you have to explicitly define the bins. Here it is implicitly defined, depending on the size. Here you have to explicitly define. So how can we explicitly define? define? So cover point address for address i am writing this cover point so here bin b1 equal to 5 6 okay So now here, if this 5, 6, 2, any values are getting generated, this bin will get covered. Here, okay. Any values among 5, comma 6 or 2. See, these things you can write by yourself and you can check. Okay. Let you just want that no, not only when, not any values among 5, 6, 2, all the three values should get generated. So if you want all the three values, then you have to write like this, bin B1 like this. So here means here there are three values. So it will generate three different different bins. So if five, six, two, all the three values are getting generated, your coverage will get 100%. So all values. Okay, so here writing is very easy, but it's difficult first you have to think. Okay, which signals I need to keep here and what should be the values, whether I should mention explicitly means or implicitly means. So these things are important. Okay. So after this, just create one instance for the cover group. Initial begin. CZ coverage. Then instant equal to new. Then instant dot sample. So if you're writing dot sample means here your coverage will get generated. Okay. Instant dot sample. So this will going to generate the coverage. Okay. So let me explain with this FIFO. Okay, so now you can see here all the uh, values are like 1111 bit. Okay, so implicit, uh, here I have written explicitly bins, but no need to write explicitly bins. Okay, because 0, 01 means if I'm simple writing cover point tr dot pool, here all the values will get covered. Okay, and in this ADA playground, actually, if I, I have written like this, okay. Uh, normally, like practically what happens, I have 10 different different test cases. Tool will compare all the test cases. Depending on all the test cases, it will generate the functional coverage. But here I am generating the functional coverage with respect to only one test case. Okay, because I don't know in EDA tool how to get the group coverage. But uh, practically, if you are working like any tool, okay, in company, okay, so they are all automatically, it will take all the test cases. Let you have written 10 test cases, it will take all the 10 test cases and it will generate the coverage report. So here, only with respect to uh, whatever the test case I have given here, this test two, only with respect to this test two, I am going to get the coverage. Okay. So now here what I'm doing, okay, uh, just let me write.
and erase your data and address that we can uh, in the code coverage toggle part that will get covered you know don't need to write here okay now see cover group cg so i have written all the cover points after that i am creating memory for it cg equal to new then here inside this main task i am going to sample it cg dot sample and you have to sample see you have to sample it inside the loop only let you are getting 10 number of data so 10 number of time you have to sample it you are getting 100 number of data 100 times you have to sample it after sampling this display it will display me the coverage what is the coverage so this is from the EDA point of view, I'm saying different, different tools have different, different commands to get the coverage. So that tool flow, it will hardly take one to two days to know. Okay, in the tool, how can we get the coverage? Important is how to write this coverage, okay. So here, let me check what is the coverage value I'm getting. Okay, so coverage I'm getting just 85%. It is not 100%. So let me check which signals are not getting properly generated. Okay, so empty signal, here it is 1, 0. Okay, no problem. Full signal also 1, 0, 1, no problem. Overflow also 0, 1, no problem. A read signal also 0, 1. This underflow signal, if I check, it is getting only 0. Underflow 1 is never going to get accepted because in my test case, I have not written the logic for the underflow to get 1. Underflow will be 1 when? When my FIFO is empty and I am doing the read operation. So here my FIFO is never empty. Okay, so that's why I'm getting here coverage is equal to 85%. Now let I want to make coverage 100%. What I will do here? But this is not correct, okay. I have to write a test case, practically, I have to write a test case that makes the underflow signal one. But let, uh, here just I am commenting this one. And that means I am saying that, okay, if uh, only underflow signal zero I am getting, then it is 100%. So now let's check what we'll get, I will get my coverage. Now you can see coverage is increased from 85 to 92. Next, we have to check again which signal are not getting uh, asserted properly. According to that, again, we have to do it. Okay. Valid signal, read enable signal, write enable over. So let in the test bench, okay. Overflow signal also. Okay, so here I have just made these things, okay, but this is not the correct way. What I have to do, I have to go and check whether my, uh, um, sorry, go and I have to write a test case that is making my underflow signal equal to one. So, but here as there is, I don't know how to generate the group test case. So, like this, you can do. Okay. So no problem, okay. So this coverage, uh, did you get some idea about this coverage? Yes, ma'am. Other students? See, what can you do, okay? Just copy paste this code in some other part, okay? 
you just try yourself okay you just make uh, like in the test bench you just generate let just take an example of header not header you just take some encoder or let's take in mux so mux i have select signal i have input okay so now you have to generate select signal just zero and one and you have to check how the coverages are coming Okay, so uh, for the syntax, you can prefer these things for the syntax only. Then you just have to change the values and check it. Here, what is the important? First part is syntax is important. Okay, how to write the syntax? Then in the interview also, they will simply write one uh, coverage and they will ask what may be the coverage value. So you have to calculate what can be the coverage value, like how many values should get generated and how many values it is getting generated. So depending on that, uh, doing some mathematical calculation, you can say this will be the coverage. Okay. So this is just the basic things I have uh, explained you. You just go through the theory. If you want me to explain any more things, then you can ask me that ma'am, I, I have just gone through this part and I'm not able to understand, I'll be explaining. Okay. So next part is your assertion. So assertions, it is simple just to do the protocol checking. Okay, so now again here two types of assertions. One is immediate, another is concurrent. Immediate means like uh, someone was asking for the end gate or gate, uh, for, uh, how can we write assertions? You can write immediate assertions. It is like come for combinational circuit. Whenever you are writing that assertion, immediately it will get executed. Concurrent assertions means it is written with respect to some clock. So whenever that clock signal is happening at that time, your assertions will get executed. Okay, so we will be writing this concurrent assertions. So how can you, you say that whether it is immediate or concurrent assertion? Concurrent assertions means it will have some property. Immediate assertion have no property, only the Boolean expression. Okay, now you should just see, okay, here I have written, always at the rate passage of clock. So if state equal to equal to request. So what is my rule first? The rule is that, okay, whenever my state machines will go to request state, whenever request one or request two is high. So I have to check whenever request one and request two is high, at that time my state is equal to request or not. So here it is going to check if state equal to equal to request, then at that time request one or request two. Assert request one, request two means it will first check if my state equal to equal to request. At that time it will check whether request one is high or request two is high. If this condition is getting uh, correct, okay, or getting satisfied, it will write correct state. If it is not satisfied, then it will write incorrect state. It will give you error. Dollar, dollar error means it will give you runtime error. Dollar info means it is like dollar display, it will get simple display. Error means it will give runtime error. If you're writing here dollar fatal, fatal means it will stop the simulation. Dollar error won't stop the simulation, but dollar fatal will stop the simulation. Okay, so this is like your concur, uh, immediate assertion. Okay, so whenever state equal to equal to request, at that time only it is going to check. This just I said, info means it is simple like display. Warning means it will give some warning. It is also like display only. Dollar error means it will display plus it will give you runtime error. Dollar fatal means it will give you runtime error and it will stop the simulation. Let you want that if this assertion is failing, then I should stop my simulation. Then use dollar fatal. Now in the concurrent assertions, you have property and you have sequence. Now see, if I'm writing like this, property means it is a concurrent assertion, okay. So same, whatever uh, way I have explained just before, same way these things can be explained, okay. So here, what is the rule? Grant should be high two clock cycle after the request, okay. Followed by low request and then grant in consecutive cycle, cycles, okay. So this is somewhat difficult. Let me write here and I can explain. So here I have to check whether my first check my request equal to high or not. 
if request is equal to high then after two clock cycle i have to check whether grant equal to high or not then if this condition is satisfied followed by means next clock cycle my request should go low then grant also should go low so this is i have to check whether my signals are coming like this or not okay so how can i write this thing so first property okay let like here two things are there one is property another is sequence so if your boolean express uh, boolean expression is somehow complex then first write the sequence then inside the property write that sequence okay so just let me sequence s1 so first i have to check request equal to high simple request means request equal to high then after two clock cycle so has as two means after two clock cycle grant equal to high then next clock cycle request should be zero so next clock cycle means has as one my request should go to zero so not request means request is going to zero then in next clock cycle my grant should be zero so this is the boolean expression you can write it inside the sequence now call this sequence inside a property so property p1 at the rate for stage of clock sequence s1 or if you your sequence here sequence is easier one so you can simply write this line here it's up to you then end property so now assert property okay p1 so if this property is properly getting asserted then dollar info assertion passed else dollar error assertion fine okay so this is a simple one okay so has this two means after two clock cycle like this you have to write so this example you understood about assertion only this example 